Hey, what's up guys? Action here. So previously, we unboxed the MSI MEG C890 Ace Media Kit. And for those na hindi pa napapanood yun, you can now watch it dito sa channel. So in this video, we'll talk about the new MSI motherboard along with the new Intel Aro Lake CPU that we'll be using. And of course, we'll run some benchmarks as well so that we can show you how this new generation hardware performs. So first, let's talk about the motherboard that we got in this media kit, the MSI MEG C890 Ace. It supports the new Intel R Lake CPUs through the C890 chipset with the new LGA1851 CPU socket. So no backwards compatibility with previous gen Intel CPUs. It supports DDR5 memory up to 9200 megatransfer per second including the new CU DIMM standard, PCIe 5.0 for both the graphics card and storage devices. So this is truly ready for the latest generation of hardware available. In terms of its design, I really like the black, gray, and gold combo scheme on the PCB and the heat sinks. It makes you think this is a luxury motherboard, as we commonly associate this kind of color schemes with luxurious products. And since the MAG line is the highest tier in MSI's product lineup, it should look and perform like a luxury. Feature-wise, hindi hindi ka mabibitin sa motherboard na to. First is on the power delivery side. This one has 24 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 digital power face design along with a 110 amps smart power stage for potentially overclocking the processor. As well as one-click overclocking feature with their easy Aussie and built-in Aussie engine to enable precise base clock frequencies adjustment. Premium thermal design with enlarged heat sinks, high-quality thermal pads, and heat pipes for optimal efficiency. A lot of high-speed connectivity options like 10 gigabit. It's LAN, dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, full speed Wi Fi 7, front USB C with 20 gigabits, and 5 M.2 slots. There are also lot of USB ports on the back with 11 USB Type A high speed ports and 4 USB Type C ports, including the ones with Thunderbolt support. There's also an 8 layer server grade with 2 ohms copper PCB, a metal backplate for added rigidity, cooling with dedicated thermal pads, and protection to the motherboard's PCB. Audio Boost 5 HD with ESS audio DAC and amplifier for the best audio experience. Mapapansin din natin na this motherboard has a supplemental PCIe power plug at the bottom, which gives PCIe devices dedicated power for passively multiple GPUs that will be used in AI computing. And also, makikita nyo rin yung CPU power connectors or EPS connectors was moved to the right side of the motherboard, presumably for much easier access and cable routing. Meron din additional 6-pin power plug beside the 24-pin connector, which could be used to enable the support for Supercharger Plus feature, which utilizes the front USB port for PD fast charging. MSI also takes pride with their easy DIY feature suite. And in this motherboard, syempre, we have a lot to talk about. First is the easy M.2 installation with their easy magnetic M.2 shield frozer 2 heatsink and the easy M.2 clip 2. In this feature, all you have to do is insert the SSD into the slot, press it down, or lock with the clip. Make it a tool free. There's also a tool included to remove the clip or reposition it according to the size of your M.2 drive. There's also the easy PCIe release feature which utilizes a much more accessible push button in order to remove the larger GPUs or other PCIe devices. Easy switch which are switches for the dual BIOS and LED on-off toggles. Easy antenna for the attachment of Wi-Fi antenna to the motherboard by just fastening and eliminating the need of rotation. Easy debug with LEDs for much easier troubleshooting and easy optimization which makes use of the MSI Center application with AI engine for smart, real-time optimizations on your PC. I also really like their new UEFI or BIOS called Click BIOS X. I think it's much more streamlined and responsive. You can easily tweak the motherboard's options and parameters for an optimal experience. There's an easy mode and advanced mode pa rin, and here we can see customizable options for the CPU, NPU, and memory. And then there's the easy config which has some performance presets for the CPU through the MSI performance preset where you can select from the Intel default settings towards the MSI Unlimited which increase the wattage and power current limits of the CPU resulting to much more CPU performance and also the memory try it which gives some overclocking preset as well for the memory other than XMP. It really looks modernized and application-like compared to the UFI BIOS we previously have. So I hope to see more of this not just only here in the high-end segment but also to the lower end ones para mas maging madali ang pagko-configure ng BIOS. And since we have the media kit here, we also have the new Intel Core Ultra 9 5K CPU for us to test this out. So action, Intel Core Ultra 9? Ano yun? 
So Intel had updated their naming scheme for the new CPUs. And for the Arrow Lake architecture, here we have the new Core Ultra instead of the usual Core i series that we've known before. So the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K is a CPU with 24 total cores, 8 of which are performance and 16 are efficient cores. May max turbo frequency of 5.7 GHz out of the box and is overclockable. May built-in MPU then or neural processing unit with AI Boost for AI processing and built-in graphics. We also be cooling it with the bundle MSI MAG Core Liquid i360 and LGA 1851 offset kit so that the CPU will fit better to the center of the cold plate for much better cooling performance. Out of curiosity, we've tested it first without the offset kit and also with it using Noctua's NH1 thermal paste and X method application. And we've noticed a significant decrease in our maximum CPU core temps during our 10 minute Cinebench runs from 95 degrees max without the offset kit to only 90 degrees max with it installed. While the average temps, we got around 76 degrees degrees without the offset kit and 74 with it installed. So the cooler does it pretty well with this chip since it doesn't throttle at all when used with the offset kit. And for our RAM, we'll be using the G-Skill Trident C5 CK series DDR5 8200 CU DIMM memory 48GB kit with 2x24GB sticks. This memory is equipped with a clock driver to the DIMM itself, which helps improve stability and reliability at higher memory speeds, which combats the current electrical issues at faster DDR5 memory speeds. It is considered the key to keep DDR5 modules operating at higher clock speeds, like what we have right now. For the other parts, we've used the Radeon 7900XTX for the GPU, 2TB NVMe for the boot drive and games, as well as an 850W power supply and Windows 11 Pro with the build version of 24H2. With all that said, here are some benchmarks for you to digest. We've tested some games as well as the synthetic applications for us to see how our new generation of hardware performs. There's no comparison with other hardware, so we'll just show you what we've got instead. Here, we tested some games at 1080p maximum settings possible without ray tracing so that we can see more CPU usage instead of the GPU. And we've tested as well between different performance presets available at the MSI BIOS like the MSI Performance and Extreme presets and Unlimited presets. So I'll leave you guys here with these benchmark results.
So that's it for the benchmark and a quick review of the MEG Ace C819 Media Kit from MSI. Honestly, there are so many things here in this video. We have the new CPU naming scheme and socket, a new DDR5 memory variant in the form of CU DIMM, and of course, a new motherboard chipset with the C890 as well. All of which makes the launch quite a bit exciting because there's a lot of new things to check out and learn. And also, the performance improvements in store for us. In terms of benchmark results, there's a slight increase in score between the MSI performance and unlimited presets, especially with the synthetic applications. Although we can also notice the power consumption increase between each preset tests. So kung sa tingin mo eh, worth it yung additional wattage for some additional performance, then you can settle with the MSI Unlimited Performance preset. Otherwise, I'd recommend staying instead of the MSI Performance or Extreme preset sa BIOS. You can also play with the MSI Center application for more options. And for the motherboard naman, I was impressed with it kasi it seems na kayang-kaya nitong i-handle ang demands ng ating CPU. Parang kahit ano ang ibato natin dito na load, eh kakayanin nitong i-handle. VRM temps are good even at the MSI Unlimited Performance preset and of course the design of the motherboard and its features. There's a lot of value in here. So if you're a power user or an enthusiast who wants the top in terms of features and good performance, you likely love this gaming motherboard from MSI.